Hi everybody, this is Rich Formidoni from Korg. We're back in the studio with the Kronos Music Workstation, and today we're going to explore the CX-3 Tone Wheel Organ Modeling Engine. The CX-3 engine accurately recreates a vintage tone wheel organ with uh, full sets of drawbars, split manuals, percussion, and all kinds of other cool effects. So let's dig in and I'll show you how it works. Just touch the drawbar settings and you can zoom in to actually see the drawbars. Now on a real tone wheel organ, as you play and move the drawbars in and out, it affects the tone. So with the CX-3 and Kronos, we recreate all of the drawbars that are in the original organ to give you the full vocabulary of the instrument. We also go a step further and give you what's called the EX mode. So I'm going to jump over to the basic tab and switch from normal to EX mode. Now when I go to the drawbar page, I have a set of EX drawbars. And these are four more additional drawbars for each manual uh, that allow you to add customizable pitches. So let's pull this one out and now we can change the pitch. So you could really create an entire chord with one finger. Now, let's jump back to the basic tab and let's look at the different ways we can set up the tone of the organ. First, we can select vintage or clean tone wheels. The 91 tone wheels that are inherent in a tone wheel organ uh, can either be pure and pristine with the clean setting or with the vintage setting, uh, it introduces leakage, which you can control with the parameters below. The drawbar level curve can be either bright or mellow. The mellow is a more traditional sound. The bright adds a slight level of punch to make the organ a little more present. The overtone level it determines the amount of harmonics and uh, adds some richness to the sound. The leakage parameter works with the vintage tone wheel setting and provides interaction between the 91 tone wheels that is characteristic of a traditional organ. The noise level parameter allows you to add some realistic amp noise. And there you can hear the rotary speaker in the background cranked all the way up, just as it might be on a real vintage instrument. So now I'm going to jump back to normal mode, and we will go to the split drawbar page. Now from here, I can split the keyboard. A real tone wheel organ usually has two manuals, or sets of keys. Being that Kronos has one set of keys, this is where you can decide uh, where you want to split the keyboard. So we can turn on the split, and then uh, split point right there, you can change it using the dial, or you can hold down the enter button and press a key, and it will set the split point exactly where you want it. If you want to quickly switch between a dual manual or a single manual configuration, all you need to do is pull down on the XY joystick on the left side of the keyboard. Just pulling that once quickly will split it, and pulling it again will uh, set it to a single upper manual. Now if we go to the drawbar page, you can see that we have two sets of drawbars, one for the lower manual and one for the upper manual. I can modify these individually by touching one of the drawbars and using the value slider or the dial to pull it in and out. Now with the drawbars on the right side, the upper drawbars, I can modify them by using the physical sliders on the left side of Kronos. Let's jump over to the percussion tab. Percussion is a sound that happens on a tone wheel organ when you press the key, and it can be tied to a specific harmonic. Here you can set the level of the percussion. It can be either soft or loud. You can also link it to one of any number of other controllers using the AMS setting. Now let's jump over to the amp, vibrato chorus, and rotary speaker settings. So here we are on the amp and vibrato chorus section. This is where you can set the type of amp that you're using. Type 1 is a standard, warm, fat-sounding organ amplifier. Type 2 gives you a little bit brighter sound. And preamp is the direct sound of an organ bypassing an amplifier plugged right into the board so it's a very dry kind of sound. Note that uh, if you have preamp selected, it also disables the rotary speaker, which we'll get to in a second. I'm going to select type 1, and you can adjust the amount of amp gain and make it as dirty as you want. Now, the vibrato and chorus settings are below. 
Here you can select either custom or preset. So let's uh, change this back to preset. And here you can choose the traditional vibrato chorus settings that are on a, a tone wheel organ. I'm going to turn on the vibrato and chorus by pushing switch number one just above the joystick over there. Here's vibrato one, chorus one, vibrato two, chorus two, vibrato three, chorus three. And again, you can tie this to any control if you want. It's already linked up to switch number one in most organ programs. Now, if we switch from preset to custom mode, we can actually create our own chorus and vibrato settings. So we can adjust the mix, depth, and speed. And you can see that we've already tied those to knob number five. So if you want to uh, make quick changes that go beyond the presets of a traditional organ, you can do that very easily. We've also included a three band EQ that's dedicated just for the CX-3. And as you make changes, you can see them reflected on the screen. Down here we have the main output section. And you can see that the main output is linked to the ribbon controller. So we can reach over with our left hand and uh, quickly adjust the volume. But if you go to the basic tab and the controllers page, you can also see the expression section. And here what we've done is we've linked it to the foot pedal. So if you have a foot pedal uh, connected to the pedal jack on the back of Kronos, it behaves just like a real tone wheel organ. So you can use your foot to adjust the volume in real time. Here you can also make adjustments to the wheel brake settings, such as the uh, speed, and you can decide whether or not the joystick will affect pitch bends. Now let's jump over to the rotary speaker tab. Here we can turn on and off the rotary speaker. So here it is on, and let's turn it off. Now notice you're still hearing the vibrato and chorus. I'm just gonna quickly turn those off by pushing switch one over on the left side of the keyboard. So there's a basic organ tone without the rotary speaker or the vibrato chorus. Now, let's turn the rotary speaker back on. There are two separate elements of the rotary speaker, the horn and the rotor, and they spin at different rates, producing that swooshing, room-filling kind of sound. So here you can adjust the speed of the fast setting, the slow setting, the acceleration and deceleration settings, even the microphone distance and spread from the speaker. So what I'm gonna do is push the joystick up just once very quickly. And there you could hear the horn and the rotor spinning up at different speeds. Now let's do it again, and you can hear them slowing down also at different speeds. So there are lots of different parameters to play with here. You can adjust the balance between the horn and the rotor, add a speaker simulation. Here you can control the horn stop phase and the rotor stop phase. So basically when the horn and the rotor are spinning, when they stop, they have to be facing a certain direction. So we can decide if we uh, want them to be free spinning and just land in a more or less random spot, or choose a degree from 0 to 180. And that'll be either facing the mic or completely in an opposite direction or anywhere in between. One of the coolest things about the rotary speaker effect is that it doesn't take up any of the Kronos' insert effect slots. It's built right into the engine. So you still have all those other slots free for use in a combi or a song. Now, let's push the exit button, and I want to touch the control surface tab to just show you what we can do with the left side of the, uh, of the Kronos, where we have this control surface. So, we can see here that each of the controls is tied to a useful function. So, the knob number one there is set to vibrato and chorus type. Uh, knob number two is amp gain, so I can quickly add some grit. Knob number four is set to overtone level. I can adjust the key on click with knob number five. And there's even some cool tricks like the wheel brake. So uh, a lot of organ players would hit the power switch to simulate a pitch bend. And more often than not, this would result in damage to the organ. But here you can just push switch number seven and quickly get the same effect without causing any damage. Looking at the screen, we can see that each of the sliders here is set to control an upper draw bar. It doesn't have to be that way. So if I wanted to, I could touch one of the arrows next to the controls 
and select a lower drawbar. So I could even have a mix of upper drawbars and lower drawbars, or EX drawbars if I wanted to, right from one customizable palette. That's all for now. More videos are on the way. Thanks very much for watching.